Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. This is Andrew Turner, founder and host of the GNT Sessions podcast. And today we have an amazing guest, Mr. Dennis Tudor. How are you, Dennis? I'm fine, thank you. How are you, Andrew? So we officially started. <laughs> we have officially started, yes. Yes, we have pressed, yeah. the, button. We have pressed the button and we are now live. <laughs> nice, nice. So so where, where, where are you today then? Where are you joining us from today? Today I'm, uh, I'm in Switzerland, I'm in Lausanne. Uh, in my office, working us in uh, every day. So uh, I'm I'm doing the usual stuff. Okay. Yeah. So so we're not going to tell every people that listen listen to this episode what day it is of the week. But normally it's normally a non-work day. That's what I would say. But because mm-hmm. we because we both are now such busy bees, yeah, buzz buzz buzz, yeah. That mm-hmm. mm-hmm. we thought this was a good time, a good quiet time to speak together. So, yeah, yeah. Welcome to the show. It's an absolute honor to have you on Thanks the show. Thanks a lot. And I think we have, lot, we're going to have some real fun on this episode because there's some interesting topics we're going to talk about. And for those watching on YouTube, are looking probably at my background, they're going, where is Andrew today? And that's a secret. So I'm not going to tell anybody until later. It's a little secret, but it does relate to Dennis being on the show. <laughs> so I suppose to kick off the episode... What gets you up in the morning these days, and what what's going on in, in Dennis's world? Ah, uh, that that's a good question. So I'm doing uh, two things at this moment. I'm doing um, uh, I'm actually the CEO of a startup called Swiss, but as your guests can see that uh, in your background, as well as I'm uh, that was my I have a PhD. That, that was my secret, Dennis. I was I was trying to hold it up. <laughs> 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 well, you just blow my cover. You blow my cover. Sorry, go on. <laughs> I think what wakes me every day is the progress. I think that's, let's say, the word that I can use for for the question. I think progress is something that I follow day by day uh, to be a better person uh, than yesterday and tomorrow to be a, a better person than today. So this is what I follow day by day. So uh, I think it's very important also to mention that uh is not only about the technological progress or technology progress uh it's also i don't know it's a progress in general Let's human human absolute human, progress human, human progress. progress yeah yeah exactly. planet progress global progress yeah yes yeah, so the, the the kind of clock's got to keep going tick 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 keep going forward and then you see progress 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 <laughs> yeah exactly exactly I mean, so, so yeah, I, mean, so you, you, I don't know, do you, do you have habits? You know, do, what, what's, one of the questions I got for you was, what, what time do you get up in the morning? What time do you get up? Do you get up at a certain time? Are you part of this, this kind of crazy gang who gets up and, and you know, like get up before they've got to, gone to bed? You know, I, I, I would lie that if I say, I would lie if I say that I wake up uh, early in the morning because I'm not a morning person. So, um, I don't know, I wake up like, 8 30 9 a.m um yeah. but I, I go very late to bed so probably that's why mm. um i think the, the sleep it's important but not that important <laughs> uh i, I probably really? sleep okay yeah you, you five don't, you don't think sleep's important no it is no it's no, you sleep at some no. Point. i i think you can sleep you know after the life so there is a lot of time after <laughs> so <laughs> okay I think it's uh it's better. So I don't know. I probably sleep around five six hours per night. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think it's enough. Okay. So I I I don't have I mean habits. The first thing that I do in the morning it's like maybe taking a shower, and then trying you know to get alive, uh, drinking a, a small ristretto. Um, you drink what? Sorry? And, uh, drink what? Sorry? You drink, you drink... A ristretto. A ristretto. What's that? A small coffee. Oh, a small like coffee. A, oh, like a like yeah. A, it's like espresso, smaller espresso. than espresso. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. That gives you kind of like a caffeine injection. Boof. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I, I need a boost. So uh, then I check my mails, my Slack accounts, uh, where all the messages <laughs> are from the startup, from the collaborators. So. Uh, then um, I, I go to the, off, to the office and then I come something at 7, 8 p.m. And mm-hmm. I eat something. Um, and after I, I don't know, I go to bed at 1, 2 a.m., let's say. Oh, wow. 
Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, you, so you are a bit of a night owl then? Sorry? You're a bit of a night owl, you know, like, tw- yes. you know, like, like you're, you're up at night. Yeah. 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 So, so have you, have you, have you done, so I've, I've done this a few times with some tech companies I've worked with in Silicon Valley, which I know we'll talk about in a bit when we get to that point, but so I, I've, Silicon, I've, Silicon who? So yeah. Silicon who? Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's what you could, you could call it Silicon Mountain in, in Switzerland. Exactly. Silicon exactly, Mountain. Exactly. But exactly. I, 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 have to, I have to admit that um, a few years ago, we had some, some major major business to work on. And we ended up actually working through the night or sleeping in the office, which was a bit mental when I think about it. Uh, I mean, that's a good habit. I don't have a. I, mean, <laughs> I have something in, me, in my office. I, I sometimes sleep, I don't know, I have a nap of 10, 15 minutes in the office too, but. Uh, Oh, like yeah. a power nap, yeah, power nap. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. I, I, yeah. I don't know. Do you like that? Mm, I probably wouldn't wake up if I if I nap too long. I won't wake up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. No, no. So I'm more of a, I'm more of a morning person. So just to let you know. So, but I actually then mm. I think the problem is is then depending which time zone you're working, you can then get burnt at both ends because you then you either become a morning person and an evening person. Mm-hmm. You know, depending mm-hmm. what time zone, because it's like different countries wake up at different times, don't they? So that's the problem. We, we actually we actually have a lot of collaborators in states. So you know, when I I'm about to go to sleep there midday, and you know they want to chat and they are, they ask me questions, and sometimes even if I want to go to sleep, uh, it, it's it, it's impossible because I have to uh, you know to help them. I have to be involved with them also in United States. Yeah, you have to go. You got to switch off that that slack. You know, that slack ping ping noise. Yeah, ding. Yeah, that, ding, yeah, yeah, ding, that, ding. <laughs> that sound. I don't know. It's like uh, uh, and also the sound of the alarm in the morning. Uh, so the the sound of slack and the sound of uh, the alarm in the morning. The some something that you know it's it's keeping you up some somehow. It's it's a sound that you might hate, but it's something. That if you don't have, it's weird. So I, I don't know. It, you you have to get. I'm have to, I'm going to send you some G and T sessions. You know, branded earpods. Yeah, I mean, you know, so you can put some, <laughs> some. So you can put things in your. You can't hear a thing. You go. You get a really good night's sleep then. <laughs> Slack. Slack changed my life. <laughs> well, Slack's going to be Salesforce now. So it's just you sold to Salesforce. I think it's forty billion dollars. I think so. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. And anyways, so so in terms, of, I know I know you you I know I kind of cut in when you were introducing yourself. So I mean, you, you are co-founder and CEO of a company called SwissPod. Is that right? Yes, that's true. So that so there's a bit of a, a clue in the name. Obviously, you are joining us from Switzerland, which is obviously <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, not, we, it's not Swiss knife. It's not Swiss knife. That's not Swiss Army knife. Yeah, it's Swiss Pod. Yeah. It's this pod. Okay. And I'm and I'm currently, as you probably will guess, if you're watching on YouTube, obviously it's a bit difficult if you're watching on Spotify or listening on Spotify, but I actually am sat in my special G and T sessions pod, which kindly Dennis built for me, because actually the pods that, that, that Dennis is working on don't are driverless, aren't they? But yeah, you, yeah. Because, because I was a bit scared. Without having a steering wheel, you 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 gave me a, a special seat with a steering wheel, so I could so I could have, so I was, you know so I could hold on to the steering wheel like this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm play, I'm playing with you. I'm playing with you. Sorry. So <laughs> <laughs> so you you mentioned that you you were you were doing a PhD. Is that right? Are you working on a PhD right now? And you and you and you the CEO of SwissPod. Is that are those are two? Yeah, things yeah. I mean mainly mainly the CEO of SwissPod. Right. Okay. But that's quite. I mean, must mean you're quite busy then. Yeah, as I told you, I worked. I mean, day by day, it's not that often when I take a day off. And when I take a day off, it's still Slack, which is, you know, uh, checking my attention. So, yeah, I mean, it's very difficult because if if the people in the company in in the startup, they they work on Sundays. I also have to be there, so it's just a matter of respect, at least, to mm. show that commitment uh, yeah. to your people, to show that you know it's you are there with them, and uh, mm. if they work on Sundays, uh, also you should be there. 
But that's the funny thing, though, if you think about it. Why, why do startups have this culture of, you know, working all the time when, you know, large organizations work nine to five, five days a week? We need to catch up, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> who, need, who needs to catch up? You mean the big, the big companies need to catch up? <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. No, I think we need to, I mean, there are many things going on. And when you actually grow, um, it's like day by day, you open a new branch of discussions and you discover more and more and you discover that you don't have a good financial status. You don't have a good legal status. You have to improve that. And, you know, those paperwork, those interactions and changing the subjects from one to another, I think they're super difficult. And that's what it makes a difference probably because for the big companies and for, let's say, corporations, I mean, um, they've been actively involved in operations uh, since forever. So yeah. uh, that that's actually the, the problem. And that's why there is such a difference between startups and um, corporations. But I can bet that also cor- the actual corporations, when they're at very early stage, they had the same uh, involvement. And I think it's like any kind of nature system, um, a beginning, let's say a relative beginning or relative start, is the most difficult period of uh, of uh, of that entity. Um, it's called it's called also transient period. I think. Uh, yeah, it's a, bit, it's, a bit, it's a bit in flux, isn't it? And it's a bit it's a bit you put in the foundations down. And I suppose exactly. Things, things can change a bit. Yeah. Exactly, and that's 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 why maybe we do that. Uh, but I'm happy for for instance a Swiss pod. I'm, I'm very happy the way we actually grow, uh, grew. Um, we act in a in a business or in a world um, that is not really does not really have a market yet, because to be honest, at this moment there is no one which is building a, a hyperloop in the world. Um, so uh, it's like you 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 can have the impression and you can be tempted to. Uh, go in a way of the growth that is maybe not sustainable. So I'm, I'm seeing here that we do, an, us and other co- our competitors, we do a very amazing project. And this really can change the world uh, in a way of uh, having a high-speed transportation system, but also sustainable. The only mode of transportation nowadays, uh, which is high-speed, is not that sustainable, the airplane. So, um, so, 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 some... so just so just to help so just to help the audience that are starting to get their head around SwissPod, obviously, could you just explain what SwissPod is? Is that you know in, in, in simple terms for people that are maybe not as au fait with it as you? We we actually I will start with a joke. So we yesterday <laughs> had a call with uh, with our CEO and our product designer, and it's like SwissPod is the is a spa of the brain. But you know we're talking about the interiors and about you know other things. So Cispod is a is a startup. I think it's one of the latest startup which appeared on the market um, in the hyperloop industry. You know, for whom uh, don't know what hyperloop is, um, it's it's very simple. We're talking here about a capsule, a train, uh, a bullet, let's say that goes at very high speeds, let's say up to the speed of sound in uh, vacuum tubes. Um, I mean. Of course, it's a very uh, naive explanation, but this is his, this is it more or less. You, uh, you, so you just described it as a bullet. Is that right? Because because it, yeah. it, it, move, it moves so fast, but but it doesn't exactly. it doesn't have a driver, and it has multiple passengers. Yeah, is that yeah. Right? Having having a constrained uh, uh, infrastructure, so having a tube which protects the trajectory uh, from the exterior uh, phenomena. I think it also make makes it let's say safer, uh, and it it makes it more reliable to have a an autonomous and autopilot uh, systems because uh, I mean if we can do that for electrical cars, uh, from this point of view it is much more simple to have it on um, uh, as well for for the hyperloop. So uh, does, it, does it does it go on a track? 
do you actually have a physical track that you go along and is that how it, it guides it maybe without knowing andrew you asked a very interesting question now um so there is a, a small rail uh, which ensures a guidance system, a levitation system, because this capsule levitates uh, in order to avoid any kind of friction. Because at that well, high so speed, so it kind of floats. It floats above the above the above. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There is a gap of floating sounds, sounds there. Like, sounds like a magic carpet. Yeah, yeah, like Aladdin. <laughs> um, and it also has a propulsion uh, rail. Uh, it's called the reaction plate. Um, okay. And this reaction plate ensures that uh, the propulsion system goes in an efficient way. So let me let me tell you what hyper, what Swisspod is now. Um, Swisspod is a startup. Uh, which is working for the vehicle technology. So our interest is to really have a very smart capsule, a very smart, let's say like a smartphone mm -hmm. of the of the mobile phones. Um, and this will give us a chance to minimize the price of the infrastructure by decreasing the interaction and complexity of the capsule and um, so it's a bit like a friction, and, a friction, and the infrastructure. It's like frictionless transport. Is that what you would describe yeah. it as? Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Mm. At the same time, uh, if you want to 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 do not to link actually the capsule to power a capsule, let's say to electrify the capsule from the infrastructure or to have an, such an interaction uh, with the capsule, the price of the infrastructure will go very high. Um, and in order to fulfill our dream i think this um i mean this will not really be possible because all the decision makers or the people um which lead the country they uh they check the price so we, we need to stay competitive with other modes of transportation i think it's very mm -hmm. important and, and, did, so, and how do you power it then is it is it actually powered itself or is it powered by electricity or is it so it's a, the c-spot vehicle is considered as being a energy autonomous vehicle, which means powered by batteries. So ah, right, okay. it's, a, mm -hmm. it's like having the, the power on board. Okay. So it's kind of self-contained, basically. It's a self-contained propulsion as well as... Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. And, but this, you know, this, this fact brings a lot of uh, complication on the design of the capsule. Mm. Uh, but, I mean, it looks like we have the power to solve them. And in case we... We validate uh, what we work uh, for at this moment. I think it's going to be a, a huge gain for the uh, hyperloop industry, but not limited to. We also can offer these propulsion systems uh, or energy reservoirs for any kind of infrastructures um, that they foresee uh, energy autonomous vehicles. So are not limited only for the hyperloop with our technology. But our main goal is Hyperloop. So it's like autonomous transportation, but Hyperloop, yeah. is, is, one, Hyperloop is one variant of that with, with yeah, your yeah. design. So I, mean, yeah. I'm just, I was just going to say, by the way, that I don't like the color of the seats because they're red, right? So the colors of the G&T sessions is nice green and blue. So can you, can you my pod, when, you, when we manufacture my pod, can you make sure they're in when g and sessions color? Uh, yeah, sure. I think uh, <laughs> we at this moment we design uh, we design a, a capsule for twenty between twenty five and thirty passengers, mm -hmm. but also we work for uh, five passengers uh, first class uh, capsules, and that that are custom made. So you can order ah, one now. So wait, if I order the if I order the VIP pod, yeah. Yeah, the VIP like, code. Could, yeah, it could be, it could, be it, could like, it could have like the kind of the, the right colors on the side, you know, like sponsored by, you know, like the G and T podcast. Sure. Sure. Okay. That's good. I'm that's glad to know. I like I like the, you know, there's like the there's like the, the basic version, the coach class and then the, the kind of first class. That sounds good. Yeah, yeah. You can have <laughs> your own capsule. Oh. See, you heard it here officially, you see. Dennis promised me my own capsule. <laughs> I do. I do that. So, so in terms of the, the obviously you call it Swiss Pod. I, I presume so. You are <coughs> the start. The start. What, what's the what's the geography that you're covering? Is it the is it the whole of Switzerland? Is it 
particular parts of Switzerland? How 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 would that work? So uh, I think uh, it's let's say more fair to say that we play as a global company, um, and the name of Swisspot came from the idea of um, we 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 had a continuity with Swiss Metro. So in the past, it was a company. I think it was in seventies. It was a company called Swiss Metro uh, that they tried to do the same thing as we do. Okay. Uh, but that time, maybe the technology was not that evolved and there were many other, let's say, issues appearing in terms of the develop- development of the technology or the price of the infrastructures or uh, these features. So uh, that's why we wanted to call ourselves Swiss, Swiss Pod. Um, but uh, for instance, we don't. Uh, we are not only in Switzerland, and we we place ourselves as a global company because our business plan is to uh, not really build infrastructures because it's not our goal to be a civil engineering company. Our goal is really to uh, provide caps because we see that the value of a hybrid company comes directly from the uh, from the from the capsules. From the technology of the capsules, from the safety interoperability of the capsules, right. Um, and uh, what we want to do is to maximize the probability of fitting one capsule solution in different infrastructures in the world. So we are not really seeing that you know we want to to work on in Switzerland. Of course, we'll be glad to, but uh, I think there is also a huge market outside of Switzerland. So. I think we so, don't so, have. So, so, so it is. It is truly global. It's but you, you're working out what you what are the boundaries of what you offer, and how that fits into like a like a global standard for hyperloops. Is that is that right? Or yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Okay. That's true. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so, so I mean, I suppose a quick question about. I mean, obviously we're on the GMT sessions, so it sounds like that we're going to obviously be doing quite a bit about tech because it's obviously some you know, it's pretty progressive, but. I mean, in terms of you know, how did you get involved in this? What's what's your story? What how did you, you know, how did you did you stumble into this area? Did you did you find it through your education? What what, what was how did it happen? So um, yeah, I, I think it's an interesting story to to say. So um, everything started in uh, 2015, so about six years ago. Uh, I was actually um uh, not in switzerland at, at that point uh, i was following the the page of uh, uh elon musk uh, on reddit never heard of it um, who is who's that is he is he famous reddit elon elon musk is elon he? who what, what yeah <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just, um, just a bit of a just a bit of a, that was a joke by the way Elon we we're, we're just joking then just joking if you you know when you listen to this podcast episode yeah exactly the the um, you mean the Elon Musk the Elon Musk yeah, the yeah, one yeah, and only yeah. yeah yeah okay and he actually uh, I mean as I told earlier this mode of transportation was proposed by Swiss Metro in seventy so way earlier than Elon Musk did. Um, but now uh, he kind of remind. I mean, he, he said, did he, did, he guys, like, "Did he bring like a modern, a modern? He modernized the thinking on it. Is that is that what he did? You think?" Let let let, let let's say that. Yeah, yeah. I mm-hmm. think it's a it's a nice way to nice way to tell. And he said that he's gonna build a one mile vacuum tube in Los Angeles, uh, in order to let every team that wants to come and test a, a pod solution, a capsule. So pod equal, a capsule equal, ballot equal, train equal. Uh, so uh, then it was a person that is my, now it's my friend who was on Reddit on his page um, and asked the question, hey guys, who wants to create a Reddit loop team? Um, and unexpectedly, I was one of the person who said, yeah, let's create one. Uh, and then we created a uh, a team on uh, on Reddit, so we we didn't know each other. Oh, you, different... you mean on you mean on Reddit Reddit dot com r e d d dot i t you did you created yeah. you created a, create a team on Reddit. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and we created that team, 
we worked in Slack, so Slack started in my life. <laughs> Slack, Slack is my life. Slack, Slack gets everywhere. It's been in my life since, yeah, Slack is everywhere. Um, and uh, I was actually working with this unknown people and virtual friends uh, from, from Reddit. And we qualified, I mean, there are a lot of teams, I think 10,000 teams. And uh, the final had around 100 teams uh, in Texas, uh, in oh, Tech Station. Tech, tech Stars. Texas, in, in the Texas state, yeah, in yeah, the yeah. nearby Houston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, it was a place called College Station. Uh, it's, a, it's a university there called Texas A&M University or something like that. Oh, te- oh, Texas. You mean Texas, Austin, Texas, around that area? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, sorry, I thought you said Tech Stars. Sorry. Okay. No, nah, no. Nah. And we met there uh, and we won that design competition with these unknown people and with these virtual friends against universities like MIT, Delft, Munich and other kind of universities in the world. Fantastic. Um, yeah, it was really great. Um, and um, after that, we said, uh, we received a mail saying that we have to build uh, a, a prototype in one year. Okay. Um, and uh, therefore, that, 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 that was happening in January 2016. Therefore, in January 2017, we should have presented um, a capsule model in his vacuum tube in uh, in Los Angeles. Um, we had a crowdsourcing campaign with that team, um, and we managed to raise the funds we needed to build this capsule. Uh, we worked uh, in Silicon Valley for a while, uh, where all the team was, um, and was very cool uh, because we went to a competition in January 2017 and we won the Innovation Award. Uh, you, mean you, you won the Innovation Award for that, that, that project? Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. yeah. After we won the Best Design Award, we got the Innovation Award. Um, oh, and good. yeah, and then uh, we went to participate in August 2017 for the second competition, but we're not allowed uh, by SpaceX. And why? Uh, why? Why not? Yeah, that's a question that I also don't have the answer uh, <laughs> for, even at this moment. Oh, wow. and then I left. I left to Switzerland. I came here, um, and I I created a new team mm-hmm. where we managed to win again the competition um, with this team that I created here. Um, and maybe, then, maybe 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 they were all kind of you know unhappy that you're winning all the prizes. You're taking all the trophies. Yeah, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then I created a startup um, with some people from the team, from the university team that I created here in Switzerland. Um, and now we really scale up the team. We scale up also the um, investments. We have different plans here in uh, in uh, Switzerland as well as in uh, other countries so that's let's say the story behind that um i've been acting in this industry since 2015 so uh it's been a a long time uh but yeah i mean i plan to continue for uh, i don't know how many years but i I really plan to uh to go for this technology and with this uh company because I really trust in the team that we have at this moment, and I trust in the technology we have, um, and I hope also the the vision it's the one which is correct. But I think the time will prove that. That's a great. I mean, it's a great heritage. I mean, you know, to win two awards, uh, recognition. I mean, I was going to say three actually. <laughs> oh, three. See, it's, it's even yeah, more, yeah. even more awards. Yeah. Stop, yeah, stop yeah. sending all the trophies over. Stop sending. We've got too many trophies. <laughs> So, so I was just going to ask you. I, I don't know how you, how that, how this works, but um, obviously Elon's got the boring company, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. And he's obviously got SpaceX, and he's obviously got Tesla. So, has he got what? Has he got one called the Vacuum Tube Company or something? What? What's what is this? Or is it part of SpaceX? The the kind of transportation piece? No, actually, what he does, uh, I think it's about the boring company. Um, oh, is it? Okay. 
Yeah, uh, I think that um, the business plans of of these two um, of this boring company is to uh, have cheap uh, digging methods mm-hmm. for dedicated soils and different transportation systems, and not uh, but not only for Hyperloop. Okay. Um, and if you ask me, I think we are a very complementary company. Uh, as we focus on uh, on the vehicle uh, more than the infrastructure, yeah, like aut- autonomous vehicles rather than the actual the the, the, yeah. the, the guiding infrastructure between different cities, yeah, or in cities, yeah, yeah. Let's say high speed contactless transportation systems, mm. um, and not because it might be a confusion here with electrical cars, but it's not the case. Yeah, because I think I think there's a Virgin initiative as well, isn't there? I think Richard Branson and Virgin are involved in some trials or part of it as well. Is that right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Actually, we collaborate with Virgin Hyperloop One um, from some aspects, um, and I think um, that they're also great, a great company. Mm. Um, they focus on more on the safety, interoperability, infrastructure. Um, social aspects of the of this technology, while we really focus on the vehicle and we try to impact as much as we can the infrastructure costs and um, operation problems, mm. uh, and try to try to 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 have an affordable mode of transportation. It's interesting because I think the so one of my other guests that's come on the show before uh, Hassan Kuba. Uh, who wrote the book uh, with Ash Ali about the unfair advantage? It's called the unfair advantage. It's a book they've, they've written a while ago, last last eighteen months. Um, Hassan is actually doing a he's doing some some research on on Elon. He calls it success decoded. So he's trying to decode why Elon has been so successful. So it's interesting to um, to listen to your story about obviously the collaboration you've had. Um, but we know the whole thing about today's session is not to talk about Elon Musk all the time, it's to talk about you. I, mean, I hope so. It. Exactly. So, so in terms of, I mean, of your origin story, the, so, so did you, did you, you know, this, this obviously it's, it's amazing what you've been able to do. I mean, with the, these awards you've had, this recognition, and obviously you, you, you're on your plan. But did you, was it, was, did you move from an academic environment into this, into this role or is this, um, is this your, have you been in multiple startups before that? What's, what, what happened, what happened before you got involved in this stuff in 2015 or a few years ago? So I, I was actually a bachelor student at that time. So I was, I was still a student, uh, in 20, in 2015. Okay. Um, so I've never been in employed or in any other kind of startups so it's it's the first one wow so that's that's yeah. quite a yes yeah, so it's kind of like from 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 your kind of educational background you went straight into this yeah that's true that's true okay. i think i think education is n- is not limited only to school no no um, I, <laughs> I think we can both agree on that one <laughs> yeah yeah and i think it's it's very important uh and, and you know i I, I I could have admitted that education equals school, but um, I think it's not the case. Um, and I think that there are many other factors that um, can influence your education. But at the same time, I don't want to... There is a thin line between having a niche of saying, hey, let's not go to the school because it's not important, mm. because education is not school. But in the same time, it's true. It's not school, but I think there is a t- thin line between those those two extreme uh, things. So, yeah, I think also a good school can influence your education. Well, I think I mean I was on a call yesterday, and, and they were talking that this. Um, so I don't know if you've been on Clubhouse as this new or it's like audio Twitter basically on steroids. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called Clubhouse. It's on iOS, no. so I've been I've been on that. So there was an interesting call yesterday because they were saying about what what is if for people's education, what is useful to them and what is not useful to them. And if you mm-hmm. look at the mm-hmm. curriculum, that you you know, I suppose to the point you were alluding to that not always, you know, one hundred percent of the curriculum today 
you know, you can apply into the practical real world. So I suppose it's that that thing which, you know, since you since the you know, 2015, you've probably learned some new things that you never even touched upon when you were at school or in your education. Is that is that there 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 are many things that I've learned and I think that one important thing that I learned from United States, it's a I, I think they I mean, they lack a lot of knowledge of technology or they lack uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, a critical thinking that you can easily find in uh, countries like UK or um, Switzerland or I don't know, maybe even Germany. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think they can complement that with a lot of um, uh, excitement, a lot of, you know, I, 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 I mean, I learned if, what if, learned. You're, talking, you're talking about the cultural difference, you're thinking about that, yeah? Yeah, I think what I learned from US was more business marketing excitement. Uh, and hearing, you know, this quota saying like, hey, let's make it happen. So even if you, you, you you don't know to do something. Is that spirit that pushes you? Saying yeah, like, me- "Hey, let's make like it happen." Momentum, momentum. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Mm. Here, for instance, in Europe, or I don't know, in Switzerland, at least they are more conservative, and I think this "let's make it happen" is not really um, found. But they might have a critical thinking. So what I learned from here, from Europe, from Switzerland. Is more, let's say, knowledge, technology, real technology, critical thinking on designing it. So, intersecting the two continents, I think um, it it created a product called Denis Tudor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, that ca- kind of started to cover. Uh, you it's know, like a, you, you're, you're like a mashup. You like a mashup from the two different yeah, sides. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I, I think you know it. It was really important to, to experience that, to experience uh, uh, the culture here, um, and yeah. I mean, let's see what how it goes. <laughs> That's good because I mean, not not everybody at, at the kind of age that you're at and the, the stage you're at has that exposure. They usually stay nationally within their own home country where they were born. Yeah, and they don't get yeah. that diversity of experiences. I mean, was there was there a reason? Because you're are you originally Swiss? You you originally born no. in Switzerland? No, okay. No, no, I, I arrived in Switzerland in September 2017, so that's okay. been four years already, almost four okay. years, let's say. Uh, but originally, I'm from uh, from Romania. I'm an East European, so also I learned some oh, other really? things. In, are you from what, what, Buc- what Bucharest or something? Right? Yeah, but I'm from southeast nearby the Black Sea, so I'm more. Um, uh, I, I'm close to Bucharest. I'm twenty two hundred fifty kilometers away from Bucharest, but not really Bucharest. So. All oh, right. Oh well. Wow. Yeah. So how? So how? If you if you were born in Romania, then how did you find your way to Silicon Valley? That's that's quite a that's quite an achievement. Yeah, I mean, um, I think also that's another story in the East Europe. Um, Eastern Europe, because what I also learned in Eastern Europe, it's like there is something that maybe you don't find it in the Western. Um, there is a, it's either you have very good people or very bad people. Um, in, in the Western, I think it's more, you know, balanced. The, it's kind of, you have more the average and everything is going smooth. Um, and I think the life uh, in in the eastern of Europe, in Romania, uh, brought me to an idea of never giving up and, you know, improving mm-hmm. myself as much as I can. Yeah. Then I also had that lucky chance to meet the ready team. Uh, right. And for instance, when I left Romania to U.S., um, I had kind of uh, thought that, hey, I'm going to go to work with people from NASA, from 
SpaceX. So I'm also very young. I was like 21, 22, something like that. Now I'm 26. So <laughs> it's not that big difference. Um, but when I arrived there and I saw the level of knowledge and the level of the work, I felt that I can do that. And in mm. some months, I also become, became a, a leader of a team uh, right. that was, you know, in the technology board of the, let's say, of the team. And I, I think that was very cool. And mm. I, I experienced something that, something like you, you know, the work that you have done, uh, maybe you wouldn't have realized that in in Romania because you're saying, yeah, maybe I'm not doing it right. But then going to US, it just proved me that what I did was correct. Coming to Switzerland confirmed that. So I think that that was the, the whole story, let's say. Well, you see, so, I mean, it's fascinating. I've actually worked in Romania myself. I worked in Bucharest. I worked for uh, Kraft Foods, which is the, people, mm -hmm. that do, the mm -hmm. people that do the purple cow chocolate. So I was working in, in Shanghai. It's called Poyana. Poyana chocolate. Poyana, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, but I was, I, was in a, I was doing some work in London and Bucharest and uh, with Metro and uh, Oshan, the retailers. And yeah. then work, working in Shanghai with Walmart. So it was like mm -hmm. a multi, multi center thing. So I was constantly jet lagged because I was flying from one place to another place to another place. I never but, knew what, what time of day it was. <laughs> so you, you feel the jet lag of two hours? No, no, but if you fly from, from uh, Bucharest to Shanghai in China. Ah, Shanghai. Okay. Shanghai. Then, then obviously, yeah, from, yeah from, from London to Bucharest, it's not too bad, but going to Shanghai is like um, fairly, fairly hairy uh, or fairly long time. Um, yeah. I was just going to say, do you know, have you, do you know uh, another famous um, Romanian tech entrepreneur called Daniel Dines? Ah, yes, the, the, the guy from UiPath. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a, yeah, the, the yeah. Mr. Decacorn. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I met him once. Um, yeah, I mean, he's a great guy. So um, he had a rough start uh, and a tough start, but... Mm. I think he uh, he did very well, and um, I, I admire him. So yeah, you know, I, I, yeah. Just, I just asked because I actually was talking to the some of my, my contacts there at that company this week and um, seeing when I can get Daniel on the show. So mm -hmm. I've, mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've put a request in to, to get Daniel on a future episode of the GNT Sessions podcast. And if you're listening, Daniel, you can call me. Just call me. Call me. <laughs> <laughs> that's great that's fantastic i mean really really pleased with i mean it's an amazing story i mean so in terms of your story i mean we, we talk you know obviously you've talked about a lot of you know your awards you've talked a lot about your time in 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 the valley and, and obviously the people you were you were working with from nasa spacex etc so that's a lot you know what i would call a lot of peaks that's a lot of like great things you know that you probably you went and thought you were probably pinching yourself going this is really amazing i can't believe i'm here yeah Mm -hmm. so i mean on, on on the converse of that there's a thing called valleys yeah so when you yeah. learn things you you have a something doesn't quite go to plan or you have kind of like it kind of goes the, the opposite direction and it, you know you, you maybe have a, a learning yeah or you something <laughs> fails yeah so any 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 kind of you know stories you or experiences you could share with about that i think 90 percent of um of the ideas that you you have are wrong, um, so it's not something that is is not often. So it's it's really it happens often to uh, do not be right. And I think what's the most important? I mean, I think defining intelligence it's uh, it's more as a capacity you have to adapt for new situations. Um, so I would say that, um, I, I've always adapted for the new situations and I've just taken, taken it from there. Uh, I think it's important to do not, let's say to, to have a, I mean, as scalable as your business is as flexible as, um, uh, your your problems are so. I think it's 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 very important to to think it uh, in a very big picture. 
So having a problem that appears, uh, I mean, they they appear at a daily basis. So I think it's not right. Uh, it's not something. It's it's just you know. You just it's, it's, to... it's, it's continuous. It's continuous. You con- yeah, continu- exactly. You're, you're continually going up, up the up the peaks and and down so, the valleys. <laughs> the, I think the question should should be other way around. So, how would you react for a success? That that's a more, a more interesting question. <laughs> well, that, <clears throat> well, that surprises you. You go, oh, we got a success then. Not the not yeah, exactly. So, that's... how you how how you calm calm yourself when you have success? I think that's that's a good question and not. How you you react for the problems because the problems are uh, uh, day by day appearing. So I think, yeah, I think it's more how you react for the success. <laughs> well, no, no, I mean that's what that's what they do say, isn't it? It's, just, it's not how you. It's not what the problem is. It's actually the, the 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 biggest thing is how you react to it. Yeah, I think I think it's. I think we have a very strong team um, and. We actually met a lot of no's in our lives and uh, we hit the wall for many times. But um, we, I mean, I think it's worth mentioning that um, our team uh, is, let's say, sustainable. We have a great team and we can base on the team members um, whenever. uh, And I think that's very important. And second of all, we have a sustainable uh, business, so our growth is based on something that it's, uh, let's say, objective. So our growth is based on technology and not on marketing and Excel and numbers. I think it's more based on innovate, innovate, physics, innovation, innovation, and then engineering, physics, engineering, knowledge. and design. Yeah, mm. yeah. So. Even if we might face bad moments in time, um, I think we'll pass them uh, because our basis, you know, uh, it's it's kind of solid, and this gives you always the also psychologically this gives you the the power to continue mm-hmm. uh, as well as um, it makes you happy because you you realize that something that might change the world in a day so yeah I mean, you you, uh, you you obviously getting you obviously the work you've done already you're getting recognition and you obviously working on something very special yeah so i think mm. the team and the the technology we have uh are always compensating uh the problems and uh we just you know we just have fun so I think that's that's very important. You just have fun when you, when you're getting all the Slack messages at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think, I think you raise I think you raise an interesting point which I wanted to come back to was about your point around you know when you you know that thing about never give up and obviously you got recognised to be like a team leader when you were over in the valley, and obviously that you know in in my you know short time on this planet, well slightly longer time than you on this planet. Um, you know, the thing about how you build a team, you know, how do you get the right people together? How do you get the rock stars together um, and, and make sure you have a high-performing team? It sounds like you've, you've cracked that or you, you're on the way to cracking that and scaling that. Is that, is that, is that a good observation? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you say it sounds like, because I think, you know, for you as a, you know, as a, as a CEO and co-founder of a business, you know, it's your first startup, but obviously you've got some superpowers, you've got some talents, you're gifted and talented, but it's bringing that people together and making it, you know, getting the plan and then executing on the plan. That that's not, you shouldn't underestimate that. Yeah. I I think, I, I think again, I have to, uh, to come again to the discussion of the team. Um, I think the people we have at this moment in the team are the most important part of the, of this project. Um, and I'm not saying that only from the expertise point of view, because we have really good people, experienced people, uh, innovators. Um, and I'm also saying about empathical people. I, I think we we really have we have really chosen uh, the team members so based on empathy. Um, mm-hmm. It's just. I cannot really explain that. It's just a feeling you have with a person or not when you get 
Yeah, that like they, uh, they're, they're, human, they're not they're not like robots. They're actually humans, and they they would they're being being authentic and supportive. Yeah. Also, I I, I also have to admit that my being a I don't know five ten percent that we're wrong with, uh, but I think it's normal. So it might be that. Yeah, but what, you, what you're saying is you don't get it right at first time, but you're getting better at it. Yeah, yeah. So I think um, there have been some people um, that we consider them a fit, but we observed that it was not the case after some time. Um, but yeah, just very few. I think, again, 5 10%, something like that. Mm. So uh, I. Also, I don't like to uh, talk about individuals in general because we are a team and we do something great just because we are a team and not because of me or because of the CTO or of other team members. But it's worth mentioning that some of the team members uh, slash individuals are also very hard workers. And they, I mean, before joining your podcast, we're working on Slack together on the Sunday, uh, on a sunny right. Sunday. So I think it's it's very important to to have these people and yeah, it's about um, it's about building the right culture and the right team environment, isn't it? To to to, to support them and, and also make them feel motivated. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So uh, it, it's I don't know, it's it's very difficult. And, how, um, and where, where, where is the team located? Then are they all are they all based in Switzerland? Or are they all over the world? Are they all in different time zones in different locations? So in general, we are in Switzerland uh, and United States. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean those are let's say the countries. But since this pandemic, Slack has been our uh, main office. <laughs> uh, but I'm not complaining about that. You know, uh, I think. Uh, on on this wave of like all the financial people foreseeing a, a crisis, an economical crisis, I think uh, we grew a lot. And this brings me to the idea of saying that what was not really sustainable before the pandemic, uh, which will become even uh, less sustainable and what was sustainable yeah, I mean, people, even more sustainable. So people have cut it out, haven't they? They've, 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 they've decided that they can't operate they just, they just made it, you know, they did a detox on things that just, just didn't add any value. Yeah, yeah, that that's true. I also agree with this. I've never thought, but yeah, I think you're right. You're right. Yeah. So we're all, we're out, we're all, that's a new, a new hashtag then, Slack, Slack, hashtag Slack office. Yes, slash, <laughs> uh, hashtag Slack. I think it's, uh, um, so, so I, I hope we, we 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 don't we don't make that much ad for Slack. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They'll be they'll be calling it Slack Force next. Yeah, <laughs> it's not Salesforce, Slack Force. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I know we I know we touched on this a bit earlier in the episode about about the, the you know the, we're on the G and T sessions podcast, so growth and technology. I mean, thank you for sharing your personal story. I mean, on the on the technology side, given that you are like a design innovation engineering company or engineering organization, you know, that's your, those are your superpowers, your special gifts and talents. I mean, what, in terms of the, of the tech side, I mean, what, what's the, what's the kind of the, the forecast? I mean, when, when, when do you believe that this, this phenomenon, this, the hyperloop thing, the Swiss Metro concepts from the seventies, when will it, when will it actually become, become real for, for, for the, for the consumer, any any view on that? Is it going to be one year away, five years, ten years, twenty five years? Any, any Andrew, thing? that's a one billion dollar question. So only one billion dollar. One billion yeah. dollars. Okay, I thought it'd be more. So <laughs> to be honest, I don't know to answer your question. Really? Okay. But I mean, there there are so many control variables around. Um, so I think it's a very complicated question, but mm. I mean, if you ask me my personal opinion and my feeling about that, I can give you a. Yeah, give, I hope give us a, a good estimate. Give us a, <laughs> give, give us a tease, you know. Give us a tease, you know. Dangle, 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 dangle the carrot, so to speak. 
Yeah, I would say 15 years from now. Okay. It it really depends on many on many different as aspects. It depends, first of all, on the investments in the sector. It depends on the uh, how the the hyper companies will approach the problem. It depends how long the first route will be. It depends what the performances of the vehicles. Um, I expect it depends on many different variables. So, but I think as a good feeling, as a good estimate, might be something 15 years from now. Um, so, but, but when you say 15 years from now, what what is the you say mass adoption and and you know number of countries and locations have this capability? So there's going to be a, is that is that what you're saying? Is that I don't know what what does or are you saying it's going to be ramp? It's going to be the first. The first deployment in fifteen years. I I, I think uh, well, what one thing it's worth to be said. I think it's uh, once you have the first route, the first functional route, then uh, the other countries or the other routes will um, accelerate. Will expand. Yeah, it will exponentially uh, grow and will exponentially be built. But I think I would say ten years the first one and then fifteen scaling okay. up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It seems to be because yeah. in the in the you know the UK government has just recently announced some stuff around electric vehicles because obviously they're trying to get off people off you know there's there's the, the types of fuel and energy you know like petrol and diesel. So there's, there's a, a big push by 2030, which obviously is nine years away, to you know to switch into electric vehicles. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I suppose it's that thing that macro kind of trend about. You know, if you can move into electric vehicles, you know, obviously not driverless, but I presume there'd be some that's driverless. I suppose then for transporting, you know, you said 25, 30 people or more people at a time, then I suppose it's a complementary, it's a complementary mode of transport to what what that would be. Yeah, I think uh, we, I mean, Hyperloop is not really um, a competitor to the trains for instance or for cars because we are talking here about another sector of high speed transportation uh, i think if you want uh it's a competitor to the planes but i wouldn't also agree totally that uh, we compete with planes because we are also complementary to the trains to the planes sorry so I think it's just a new mode of transportation, the fifth mode of transportation, as fast as a plane, as convenient as a train. Okay, okay. Well, what are the, what are the five? What are the five then? What walking, walking on your own legs, car, bike, plane, train? Is that what you're thinking? <laughs> Let's say, yeah, yeah. Are those the main five. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, you could get a piggyback, couldn't you? I suppose you know you could you could you could jump on somebody else's back. Maybe that's a, maybe that's the sixth one. You know, like piggyback. Yeah, you know, I mean, you, you know, I piggy, piggy, you know piggyback. Like planes, trains, boats. All oh, right, cars. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about the boats. Yeah, yeah, and hyperloop, the fifth. But maybe there's flying planes as well. We could do flying planes. I mean, uh, we can no, also no, no, consider no, no, bikes. No, I know, uh, I, know, I, know, I know it's flying cars, not flying planes. Flying cars. No, I'm joking now. I'm joking. I'm, I'm going crazy now. It's, it's a combination of a plane and a, a car. <laughs> so it's not a... It's not an officially recognized transportation Exactly. Method. It's not an independent uh, <laughs> way. So I'm, 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 just I'm just joking. We're just having a bit of a laugh. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that was my comedy moment. <laughs> anyway, so, 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 yeah. I suppose, so, I mean, in terms of, um, you know, given that kind of, um, that kind of like in, looking into the future, what, what's, what's getting you excited today? What's getting you really excited today? What, what's, what, what motivates you to get out of bed every morning? What, what makes? I know you said about progress, but. What what's what's getting you really excited and you getting you feel like a 
you feel like a young boy with a new toy? Uh, I, I feel I feel that um, we are on a peak uh, in on this planet. I think we are before this pandemic on a peak of uh, destroying kind kind of the planet. Mm. Um, and I'm very happy that I can be part of a technology. So I like to do technology so I can be happy. I'm happy that I can be involved on a technology that might change a little bit this trend of uh, consumerism, um, yeah, not dis- you know, dis- dis- wasting dis- food dis- and reversing dis- destructive. Dis- yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So I think that's a very important uh, fact for me. And I'm, ve- I'm very happy that I'm part of a generation that can really, and part of a team generation society that um, we can together change this uh, uh, destructive uh, future. So I think that's very important for me. Mm. Yeah, it's a bit like it's a, I saw it's a bit like the kind of the you you are truly. You you do have an opportunity to make a real difference and make a you know I suppose it, you know and it's an overused phrase but the kind of the classic Steve Jobs make a dent make a dent in the universe. Yeah, yeah, and also I think if you ask me, I mean from my for my personal life, I think also there have been a lot of questions that um, we don't ask ourselves. So I don't know why we have every day a sunset, you know. We've never had this answer. So, uh, you know, there are many questions that I like to think about and uh, there are some new ones appearing and you never found the the answer for that. And I, I think it's, I mean, this is only for, for my personal uh, life, let's say. Um, but yeah, professionally talking, I think uh, what I'm happy of is um, the way it's the fact that I can be part of a change, and yeah. mm-hmm. I hope that this change, it's it's a bit reversed than the destructive way of um, how this planet worked for a while. So yeah, I mean that mm. might be let's say something that mm. I I like to to do. So yeah. Because I was just going to say also, I mean, that was the other thing you, you know, you, you didn't say you were excited about your PhD, but I mean, I presume is your PhD related that you're doing now, is that related to this topic as well? Are you doing some research and advanced like, is, white, white space it, it, on this area as well? Is that is that what you're doing? Or are you doing something completely abstract from what your day job is? So, no, it's totally related to Hyperloops. I also do, uh, I think it's a very interesting PhD. I, I think there is no one in this world doing a, a PhD in Hyperloop except me. I've never oh, wow. heard about. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Um, and I'm, I'm going to call, call you Chief Hyperloop Officer, CHO. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think um, it's a nice PhD and it's a nice program because we combine and we intersect the philosophy world with technical aspects of Hyperloop that are very complicated with different uh, social aspects. Um, I I, I think it's so interesting and it's so time consuming also. Uh, And uh, I think the outcome of this PhD will give a first image for, not only for the experts, but also for, let's say, society people about Hyperloop and why we need or why we don't need because we don't have the answer yet. Mm. Um, of course, I can be a bit biased because I'm also having a company in Hyperloop and it looks like I'm in this way to do it, to do that. But uh, I think there is a difference between the conclusion, conclusions I have at my PhD and the technology I build on, on my startup. So... Um, I might be a bit subjective about uh, the company I lead, but I cannot be uh, subjective about the PhD I'm doing. So I think that's a very nice difference between my two professional lives. Um, so, yeah. Well, so, I mean, so it's, it's, it depends if you call the PhD professional or personal. 
<laughs> I think, yeah, I don't know. I, I think uh, we'll, we'll have some answers in two years from now on. So uh, also for for the PhD as well as for, uh, for the company. Um, on both uh, sides, I think we're on the good direction. And it's always about the way, not about the result. So, uh, yeah, it's about, it's, it's, what do you say? It's about the journey. <laughs> yeah, it's about the journey. Yeah, that's true. So uh, I'm very happy with the two journeys I have. Um, now, if you ask me, especially about the, the company one. So, yeah. I hope. I mean, I mean you're, not, you're, 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 you're not. You're not being. I mean, you know, not normal. Normally, people don't do a PhD and run. You know, become the CEO of a tech company at the same time. And normally, normally, that's quite a lot of work. That's quite a lot of time taken up. <laughs> normal people wouldn't do many things that I do. So. <laughs> I don't want to go into details here. So. No, it's okay. It's okay. No worries. No worries. We can talk about that later. <laughs> well, no, that's, that's, that's good. That's good. I mean, it's definitely going to, I mean, it's interesting that you can, you can combine. There's obviously some intersection and some crossover with some of the, the stuff you're doing on the PhD. I wasn't sure if you were, you were doing something completely abstract, some com- com- completely in a different domain area. It sounds a bit, sounds like your, the PhD that you're working on will obviously inform some things as well to do with your business journey as well, which is great. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I haven't got a PhD, you see, so I'm jealous. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to catch you up now. You see, I'm to, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to speed up in my, in my pod. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go I think into, into top gear to catch you up. I, I think, I think, I think uh, we established at the beginning that the education is not the school. So, you're right. Actually, you're right. Thank you. For, thank so. you. Thank you for pulling me up on that point. That's a good point. That's a good point. That is. <laughs> <laughs> So in terms in terms of I mean in, I know you I know you obviously you, you know the um, the hyperloop industry pretty well. Any 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 predictions that you you would like to share around technology? I mean, are you, are you generally I presume you're generally positive about what's going on in technology. Or are you are you are you concerned about it? Um, I I think um, we'll have a chance. I I think. Our, I mean, what uh, unites us, it's it's really the same dream. So we want this to happen. And I'm concerned about that because um, some, some of the companies, uh, just to simplify a bit this industry and just for the sake of saying, hey, we have the technology to build the Hyperloop, um it might backfire in a day because if we don't do it properly we'll not have a chance and i'm saying properly it means cheap efficient and so on and so forth mm. um and i'm giving you the example the historical examples um apple is not the first company who launched uh a smartphone neither a smartphone nor a a, a tablet uh, Tesla is not the first electrical car which appeared in the uh, history, and uh, I can give you even more examples. So yeah, I it's, think, like, it's like the first mover advantage versus the the follower. Yeah. Yes, I, I think what I'm concerned about might be that uh, we'll not do it properly. So, but this is what we do at Swiss, but we want to make it properly and. Mm. Uh, even if nowadays might be a, a company or two companies a bit ahead of us uh, because they started a bit earlier, I think with this vision and with this team and with the technology we have, we'll catch up soon. Yeah, but, um, but Manny, I think that goes back to the point that, uh, you know, do the right thing, isn't it? Yeah, we isn't have to it? do it right. And, have, and, have, and having some principles where you don't compromise on certain things. And let's face it, the, the heritage of Switzerland and I presume some of the people you've got in your team probably have some very high principles and high quality standards that they want to keep because obviously there's a there's a safety piece around you know what you're doing that's that's paramount and trust. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. 
Um, we hope that we'll not uh, face a moment where when we have to compromise our technology and um, our way of thinking. And I think uh, it's important to um, to live with dignity and to yeah. to to make it as you think it's um, it's good to make it. But in the same time, again, it's a thin line between this idea uh, as well as uh, having everyone saying, hey, this is what I think is good, so I do it. So also, it's a very thin line, and this feature should come with meritocracy. So should come with an objective judgment. Um, I mean, it, it, it's very difficult, but I'm trying to say, but I think... Think that well, that's, would that, be that's the job. That's the job of the chief hyperloop officer or the CEO, isn't it? That's that's the joys of being a CEO. I think you got to see. Yeah, you got to see, yeah, through, yeah. see through, so. di- <laughs> through see through different lenses and then make the right decision. You know, based on what makes sense and what's the right thing to do. I suppose that's the make a balanced decision. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, we'll see. There are many other important things, and uh, not only the way of thinking. So. We'll, I mean, I'm pretty sure that in time we'll, um, we'll make it as should be. So, yeah. Fantastic. So I suppose it's, I mean, to, to I've got I've got another couple of things to just just ask you about. So you know, we talked about being you know what you're excited about, and you obviously explained about that. What what are you grateful for at the moment? What 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 do you really what are you really grateful for? So I'm grateful um, because I'm healthy, first of all. Uh, I'm grateful because I can, I don't know, I can be part of this uh, society. I'm grateful that I was educated in a way of being constructive. Um, I'm grateful for the people I have nearby. I'm grateful for the fact that I live in a nice country. I'm grateful I don't know. I'm grateful for everything in general. And uh, I think everyone should be grateful for what they have and for what they receive. Um, I think it's important to to be grateful, but in the same time, I think it's important to do not to never give up trying to improve yourself and trying to uh, have more and more. And when I'm saying more and more, I'm not saying about money or uh, I'm saying about knowledge, progress, um, and also it's important to judge uh, in in a meritocracy way, um, but in the same time, so doing your best without having any kind of expectations. I think that's mm-hmm. something that everyone should uh, should be, and this also will bring you uh, gratefulness. So I, I think I'm grateful for uh, having this uh, I mean, professionally talking, I'm very grateful working with this, uh, I don't know, I would say weird people or smart people. It depends how you you see that. Uh, I'm grateful for uh, to for hearing any noise of Slack at any moment of the day. I'm grateful <laughs> of my alarm and I can wake up and, you know, without any kind of help. So I think those are some important things that, we don't see maybe uh, day by day, but we should not ignore that. So, mm. but again, again, I think being grateful shouldn't constrain you to try to improve yourself, to try to grow as much as you can uh, intellectually as well as um, I don't know uh, personally. Uh, you know, I'm I don't want to. Uh, to actually talk too much about that, but I think it's important also to see the other side. Uh, so being grateful, but trying to improve as much as you can. Mm. Fantastic! That was really that was really good. That was really good. Thank you for sharing that. It's um, <laughs> thank you, Andrew. I think because you, you think it's holistic as well. You, you you talked about a lot of things there, personal and professional. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So so I mean, I mean, you know, given you are you are you know a a co-founder. And you know, a, you know, the CEO of, of a, a very, in, you know, very interesting organization, and you're on your journey. I mean, for people that are listening to this podcast in their cars, on their trains and planes, maybe 
um, or maybe motorbikes even. What, what would be, what would be the? I mean, in 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 your in your journey so far, what what would be the kind of advice that you would give to people who maybe aren't as far along the journey as you? I I think I think um, I'm I'm not a person to give advices. Um, yeah. because I, I think everyone should advise himself, um, in a way or in another, uh, hearing this podcast, I think, uh, maybe it is at least one person who will get inspired of something that I said, and I'm very happy with, uh, that thing. Um, so I don't know, I think uh being grateful and trying to improve yourself day by day um and not having expectations but doing your best i think uh it's a good advice i'd say and i think in life if you don't have if you don't face problems and you just avoid them or ignore them you'll never be able to pass or to you know to pass certain stages of your life or to improve yourself or to arrive at a level of um let's say to 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 uh to to achieve to to arrive at your uh whole potential let's say because i think the problems are that the i mean we see problems in a negative way Mm. But I think the problem should be seen in a positive way. So uh, there, be, there might be problems uh, that you you are scared of, but just trying to be rational and trying to face that problem, um, it will help you longer term. And I think it will bring you a sustainable and long uh, improvement. So I think it's very important to... To, real, to realize who you are and to uh, try to face the shit in your life. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of summarizing it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I was, you know, trying to explain that, but I think it's more pragmatic to say mm. this way. Thank you. That thank you, that, Andrew. That, that, <laughs> My no, pleasure. No, 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 thank you. Thank you for the time. It's been a really good really good discussion and really I, and to your point i think that's the thing that motivates me is is actually all the conversations that i have with all the guests and amazing guests including yourself have been amazing today it's um are you, are you it, grateful for that i'm great yeah i'm grateful for my for just actually having this podcast i'm grateful for the amazing guests i've had on the show i'm grateful for the, the, the guests i'm gonna have in the future um and you know to your point is just by listening to the show and being being on the show, you know, I've I've learned a tremendous amount from the the episodes I've done already, and and also I hope that other people that are listening to this show listen learn something and and do something and make an improvement in their journey. That's that's what mm-hmm. that's what motivates me. So fantastic. So in terms of actually, you know, you because you're in a really interesting space and you're in a really interesting, you know. So if people want to find out more about what what you're working on and you know, is is there some some particular areas that people could could look at and find around around that area? Where where would you suggest they look if they want to know more about what's going on? I mean, they can follow uh, all the social media pages we have. So we're on Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, and Facebook services, um, as well as uh, the website swissspot.ch. Um, so uh, we, I mean, after different podcasts or different interviews we we had. There have been uh, people which followed up with us, so we're responsive with everyone. We try to do our best to uh, respond all the requests uh, we have, and if uh, if there are requests, uh, don't hesitate, and our team will will answer you as soon as possible. In general, we're very responsive, and I think it's it's good to be open uh, to different challenges. That's because of Slack. That's because of Slack. You see, you link to all to Slack. <laughs> slack, slack force slack force is going to be coming down the tubes yeah no th- thank you yeah. thank you for sharing that so thank you thank you thank you very much for this episode today it's been a great episode and i i'm i've enjoyed it actually sitting in one of your pods 
<laughs> Thank you, Andrew. It's obviously not Thank one of the. Us. It's not the VIP one with the, the right color scheme, but maybe that's in the future. You see, so you you you'll have one, don't worry. Exactly. Thank you. So, so, <laughs> so that was Dennis Tudor, and soon in a few years to be Doctor Dennis Tudor, who's co-founder. Of no, Studio. no, no. I'll I'll still be I'll still be Dennis Tudor. Oh, you will still be Dennis <laughs> Tudor. Okay. Maybe I'll do my I'll do my PhD. That would be Doctor Turner. Then you see. Um, <laughs> who's, <laughs> who's co-founder and CEO of SwissPod. And um, you know, I'm fascinated to watch your story and how, how things play out. And it, it sounds like you you know you're working on something really really transformational. And I wish you all the best with it. Absolutely, with the best. So thank you for your Thanks time. Thanks a lot. Guys. Thanks a lot. And this was Andrew Turner, founder and host of the GNT Sessions podcast. Catch you later. Bye. <laughs>